Hi everyone, in this video we are going to take a look at titration. So over here I have two chemicals, R is an acid and S is an alkaline. And today we are going to use this indicator called thymophilin. Now this might be the first time that you are seeing this indicator. It's not often used, not like metal orange or universal indicator. Nonetheless, it's all about color change and we will take a look at it using this video. So I have already filled my burette with the alkaline solution S and I've also prepared a pipette of 25.0 cm cube of the unknown acid solution R. So what I'm going to do now is to actually dispense the acid into this conical flask. Do remember to rinse your conical flask with distilled water so that you can remove any form of impurities that's inside. Remove the pipette filler or eject out the liquid by pressing the button. So allow the stream of solutions to flow down through the middle of the conical flask. Try to avoid any form of splashing onto the sides of the conical flask. At the end, you realize that there's some solution that will remain in the pipette. Now this is when you do your three taps at the base of the conical flask, so as to remove the solution. A bit of it might still be left inside, but not to worry, that has already been accounted for. Now, we are going to put in the indicator. So for thymophilin, right, just like all your other indicators, you only need about 2-3 to three drops of it. And when you add it in, do take note of what is the original color of the indicator in the solution. As you can see over here, thymophilin is actually colorless in the solution of an acid. Sway around to make sure that it is mixed well, and then place it on top of a white towel below your burette. Do ensure that your burette is being adjusted accordingly so that the conical flask is directly below it with the tip of the burette just slightly inside the conical flask. Now that you have set up your titration setup, it's time to add in the titrant. Most students at this point in time, what they'll do is that they will actually dispense the titrant in with swirling and hope to see a color change then they will turn it to drop wise and then continue to add until the color change is a permanent one. However, that's actually not a recommended course of action. Instead of dispensing all the solution at the start, what you should try to do at the start is to actually try to figure out how to add in drop wise amount of solutions. You try because at the start, right, you have the liberty to actually adjust the volume accordingly until you figure out what is the angle of the knob that can give you the drop wise addition. As you can see over here, this is what we mean by drop wise. Whereby it takes a while for each drop to be formed so that we can swirl, observe before we let the next drop fall down. Take note of how much should the knob be turned, the angle of it. Then now feel free to add in your solution as per normal by dispensing it down as what you have done usually. As you continue with your titration, you start to realize that there might be a color change that seems to appear, but once you swirl it, it will start to disappear. This means that we are very, very close to the end point. At this point in time, you should be adding in in drop wise. Every drop, a swirl, and an observation. The end point is determined by the point whereby a drop actually causes a permanent color change. So in this case, it seems like we are looking for a color change from colorless to blue. Take special note to add in only a drop at each time, turning off the tap, swirling it to allow the color change to happen. Have a bit of patience, make sure that you only add in one drop at each time, and you realize that the color change will happen immediately once you add in the correct volume of titrant. In this part of the video, we are still going to do titration, but this time around, we are going to use a different indicator. The solutions are exactly the same. So, let's dispense the unknown acid into the conical flask. As I mentioned previously, make sure that your conical flask has already been rinsed with distilled water so that there's no impurities within it. After removing the pipette filler, do remember that once all the solutions are being dispensed out, do a gentle three taps at the base of the conical flask to remove any form of solution that is still within the pipette. But sometimes you might realize that a few drops of the solution seems to be on the wall of the conical flask. Not to worry, you can always rinse it down with distilled water. This will actually not affect your results because the number of moles of chemicals remains unchanged. Remember that in during titration, it's more about knowing how many moles of chemicals are actually reacting with one another. So in this experiment, we are using the indicator called screen metal orange. Screen metal orange is different from metal orange. 
in the sense that it is actually red in color with an acid, but the color change that it gives at the end point is different from how a metal orange would give you the color as. In fact, screen metal orange actually gives a more accurate color change that's easier to identify as compared to metal orange. Now, let's set up the burette to make sure that we can dispense the solution directly into the conical flask. As mentioned previously, let's try to find out how much should we turn the knob in order to achieve the dropwise addition first. Remember the angle that you're turning the knob to, so that later on, when you need to turn it to dropwise, you can be able to achieve this angle as soon as possible. Now, just a reminder that during titration, consistency is very important. It's important to make sure that the final results that you choose are within plus minus 0.20 cm cube of one another. That is how you can achieve the consistency within your values. So we are going to continue to add in the titrant until we start to see a form of color change that tends to stay for a while and disappear once we start to sew it. If some of the solution were to be splashing onto the side of the conical flask, not to worry, like what I mentioned, rinse it with distilled water, the total number of moles of chemicals did not change. So it really doesn't matter how the distilled water is being added in at which point, so not to worry too much about it. Now, once you start to see a different color, that's where you need to start slowing down your titration and start to add it in dropwise. Remember the angle that you obtained just now? Find it back and try to add in the chemicals slowly at each time. Remember to swirl the chemical to make sure that the indicator as well as the solutions are mixed well together so that any form of color change can be observed very obviously. Now it looks like we have achieved the end point whereby this color change actually gives you a gray solution. But sometimes in the exam, we might doubt ourselves. This is when you need to do a bit of checking on your end. You can first take a look at what is the burette reading. Record down this final burette reading first, then proceed on to add another drop. Now when you add in this other drop, if you notice that there's another color change, that will mean that you have exceeded the end point and the end point was supposed to be when it is already green in color. So let's see what happens. Now this one drop actually causes the solution to turn into green. Now remember that an indicator is not supposed to give you two sets of color change when it achieves the end point. So therefore, just now when it was grey was when the color change should have already occurred. And adding in one more extra drop will have caused the solution to become too alkaline, hence giving you a green solution that means you have exceeded your end point. So in a nutshell, the important skills during a titration experiment is to make sure that you know how to add chemicals in in a dropwise manner as well as how to determine the end point of the experiment. Of course, if you know some information about how the indicators work, it will help you. But to be very frank, you don't really need to memorize how the indicators function in order to do well in titration. It's more about learning how to recognize when the end point occurred and then how to manage your dropwise addition.